This is the second part of how to convert Rhino model to Revit series. I will demonstrate how to build the twist twin towers in Grasshopper and push the geometry to Revit as a BIM object. You will learn how to convert levels, floor slabs and facade system through adaptive components. This can be watched separate to part 1 tutorial. However, I highly recommend to watch the first tutorial as it won't cover the basic components but more focused on the advanced tools. Alright, let's start from building the towers in Grasshopper first. Okay, I'm going to start with creating a base for the twisted tower. So, draw arbitrary L shape floor plate. Uh, this floor plate isn't any bigger than uh, 100mm, so it's quite small. Um, so, let me just increase the size of this slowly. So get somewhere around 100 meter apart from corner to corner. So I'm going to create a curved pram just to contain this foot plate, floor plate. And I'll just bring it up somewhere around there. I'm going to move it vertically. So type move, move, connect that there and Z axis. I'm going to move it number of times so use a series component to do that right there and we'll have to define the floor to floor height so it'll give four meters and you will have to add so this count the last is the number of story that you want to have so i'm going to give 45 it's a nice and tall and that needs to be twisted so we'll use a rotator tool so rotate that And we will give a rotation. So we'll use series again. And I'll copy these two, drag it up. And it has to run 45 times. So I'm going to keep the 45 connected in tech to series. Drag it down somewhere around one. So I, I want to I wanna rotate it gradually, not, in, not dramatically. So change that to degree. And you see that the tower has been rotated. Let's just hide that, turn off the preview. You could increase it just to make it more dramatic outcome. So that's number 10. So I'll bring it down to somewhere around two so that it's nicely curved and rotated. Right, so next is I'm going to create a bound surface. So I'm going to give floor plate. So that just generated. And then I'll also make a skin uh, out of the floor plate that we just generated. So all you need to do is just give a loft to the, um, the outline of the floor plate. They will sweep all the way up from the bottom. Let's name this so that we don't get confused. I'm going to group this as usual and right click, change that to floor plate slap let's name let's number it because we have to do this process twice give change the loft to skin one okay so we'll have to rotate these two as well to get the to get the twin tower so rotate and give 180 to angle and change that to degree again. So that's been duplicated. And let's copy that and connect geometry to skin. Right, so we now have completed modeling a twisted tower in in Rhino through Grasshopper. Let's hide that preview. So we'll have to adjust clearly label this this is floor plate so floor slap two and skin two right next step is pushing these to rabbit so let's go to the rabbit tab and get slap and to do the slab we need the surface first and we know these two are the surfaces that requires a type 
and the level uh, for this floor plate. So we'll have to push these levels that we just created. We know the floor to floor to ceiling height is four meters, and that needs to be pushed using Jurevit level. So now I'm going to push a series of levels from Rhino Grasshopper to Revit, and we'll have to name this all. So if we take a look, it requires a name of the each level and the elevation, which we know that this is that. So we'll have to drag and drop. Other thing to remember is that uh, from my previous tutorial, I covered this before, we'll have to calculate uh, this the height from uh, a feet to meter. So bear that in mind, if you go to go to Google, you'll be able to find this. So you open conversion. Okay, I'm gonna copy that. And we'll look to the multiplication of the height. This fits to there, and this now has to feed to elevation. The name, we'll have to also give a name. So I wanna call it level, blah, blah, blah. So level in space. And we'll repeat this level as long as this length, 45. And if you check this through panel, it will show you that it has just ran 45 times because it's starting from zero. And let's use a series to create that level, the number to distinguish the name. So if you copy this, in fact, you could just copy anything, either this or this series. And I'm gonna copy this and drop it down to one. And also this has to start from one, level one. And if we concave this two, data goes first, this first prefix goes first and then incremental of the number goes after. And if you check this in panel and it shows that it starts from level one all the way up to level 45, that fits to name. And the view has to be told whether this to be operated to the view. Right, so this is ready to be pushed and I am going to push this now using Jaravit, send component and this required button, Boolean button operation. So go there. Let's go back to Revit, click Jaravit, push the button to, to translate. Now the level's been generated all the way up to level 45. Let's drag all the way up. 45, that's been placed. Right, that's that. Okay, let's move to the floor plate again. So that requires the level. We know this is this. Concated, that name has to be pushed to there. And this requires the floor type. So we, let's use the generic 300. Uh, You'll make you'll have to make sure that this family type exists in your uh, in your Revit family. So if, to do that, you you can quickly go back here and check the um, the floor type. Make sure that you do have that floor type. So I'm going to use the generic 300. That gets connected to type, and it's ready to be pushed. Uh, this tells me that something is wrong. Perhaps the surface, right? So. That may not be ready. Okay, so that I was connecting skin to surface. That has to be this floor slab. And this floor slab has to be connected to there. Hold down shift. So the surface is slab that are all connected to this component in particular. Uh, let's push this back to Revit, drive it. Right there and type button, connect that button to send and go back to Revit and go add-ins to Revit, ready to receive, push button, hit OK 
and you have floor place been pushed to Revit now. Next, we are going to construct this skin and we know skin one and two are ready to go. And this time we're going to use adaptive component. We'll have to do that. P before we're doing this, we need a point series of points and also the, um, the family, adaptive component family in Revit. Uh, we'll have to divide this surface into a number of quads and I'm going to use deconstruct deconstruct wrap and that that gets connected to there and we know the faces so I'm going to use the um, so I know that there are six faces ready to be grabbed and I'm going to use a mesh surface and this requires the uh, UMV count. I know that I have 40, 45 floor and U, so which is the vertical direction, is divided 44 times because you're always uh, one less than the number of floor slabs. And the V count is the horizontal division, so I'll give somewhere around five. Uh, seems sufficient enough. You can further divide it. You can play with these two, obviously. It doesn't You don't need to follow this exact. And next step you will have to do, you will have to divide this. So type explode mesh. So all the faces are divided. And now we need to deconstruct mesh to get the vertices. Right, so these vertices have just been generated. And to see this, all you need is um, mesh, ed mesh edges. And we are ready to push this to points there. And that's that. And we just need to repeat the exactly the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this command components all and push it and that gets to there so the second skin also got divided umv directions and we now have vertices these two adaptive components requires a family type so now let's go back to revit create the family for adaptive components generic adaptive Open that. So because I've done this before, I'm gonna go rather quick this time. So this requires a four points. So if you wanna learn more about this component, adaptive component, I suggest you to go to find other Revit tutorial and learn this separate. Uh, or I might cover this in next tutorial if you require to learn more. Uh, next is that use reference line and make sure that you turn the 3D snapping. I'll run clockwise and escape. And I'll drop a point somewhere there and make sure that appears always. And also draw a square, which will be the profile of the frame. Turn off the 3D snapping this time and draw a profile of your frame. What you have to do, you have to define the frame depth and width and give family parameter. I'll call it D1 for the time being and I'll give that as D1 as well. So it's equal dimension. Uh, I'll change that to 100 and let's click that. I'll hold down hold down control and click the uh, frame reference line and click solid and now we just generated a frame that ready to be adaptive adapt or ready to be go in and used in the actual Revit and push that back to model and let's check whether it's been brought in let's go to 3d and now we can see that family one has been brought in drag and drop this requires a four points and it seems like it works perfectly fine. So remember this name, family one, and let's call that family here and 
connect that to family and family type. Do the same thing for the other adaptive component. Same here, family, family too. Right, so, so this is ready to be pushed and we'll do the same thing. So go to Jeravi Send, requires a button, go in, connects that and connects that, connects pushy. Right, and go back here and click Jeravit and push back. Okay, let's go back to Revit Radio. So it's all been brought in now successfully. So if I go to the plan view, check whether it's been generated. Right, so it's been generated and we got the floor, we got the we got the wall curtain wall system in the Revit model and let's go to 3D view again and let's go top view and cut a section through there and see right so that's just generated so um, I hope this has been helpful and um, I'll be able to cover the other way of translating rhino geometry into Revit next session um, I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time thank you